On the morning of October 12, 1924, the day started out peaceful at the Kushaka Club near Lake Kushaka at the southeastern foot of Loon Lake Mountain. This was a place where men would gather for camaraderie, hunting, and to soak in the wilderness. Among them was Leeton G. Goodell, a retired policeman from Buffalo. Goodell wasn't just some greenhorn in the woods. He had hunted before in places like Blue Mountain and Indian Lake, so he knew his way around the Adirondacks. The Kushaka Club was a place to relax, breathe in the mountain air, and forget the busyness of life. Lighton had come with his nephew, Dr. Charles Goodell of Jamestown, and a few other men. It was supposed to be a straightforward hunt for partridge that day, something he'd done many times. After dinner, the group decided to head out for the hunt. It was around mid-afternoon when Leighton, being the independent type, told his companions to go ahead without him. I could take care of myself, he said, confident as always, and nobody questioned it. This wasn't the first time he'd been out alone in the woods. He was in decent health for his age, with plenty of experience to handle himself. So, with the usual Adirondack trust in nature and each other, the men split up. But here's where things take a dark turn. When Leighton's nephew, Dr. Charles Goodell, and his companion returned to camp later that afternoon, Leighton wasn't there. At first, nobody panicked. Why would they? It was typical to lose track of time in the woods. But as the sun dipped lower, concern began to grow. They fired off rifle shots, the sharp cracks echoing through the trees, hoping Leighton would hear and return. But there was no reply, and with temperatures dropping below freezing that night, worry turned to fear. At dawn the next day, Monday, October 13th, the men gathered again, this time to organize a proper search party. Dr. Charles Goodell, along with fellow doctors and close friends from the camp, began combing the woods. The terrain around Loon Lake Mountain was tough. Thick woods, rocky slopes, and streams that wound their way through dense undergrowth. It wasn't an easy area to navigate, even for experienced woodsmen like Leighton. The search party grew quickly, with more than 100 men joining the effort by the next day. Forest rangers, state troopers, and seasoned guides spread out in all directions, hoping to cover as much ground as possible. They had help from bloodhounds who picked up Leighton's scent, leading them first to a stream where he had likely stopped to drink, and then to a stump where it it appeared he had rested. But then the trail went cold. That stump became what searchers call the last known point. From there, it seemed Leighton had simply vanished. The dog circled, confused, unable to pick up the scent again. Searchers found signs that Leighton had been walking in circles, as though he were disoriented, lost, or even panicking. It was clear to them that something had gone wrong. The cold Adirondack nights would have taken their toll on anyone, and with temperatures dropping below freezing, time was running out. The days stretched on. Searchers fired shots regularly hoping the sounds would guide Leighton back, but as each day passed, hope dwindled. The weather wasn't cooperating either. The cold and damp conditions made the search even more grueling. The rangers and volunteers trudged through thick brush, climbed steep inclines, and crossed streams that cut through the wilderness, but despite their efforts, there were no signs of Leighton. Even the summit of Loon Lake Mountain was scoured by the search party, yet the dense, unforgiving wilderness seemed to swallow him whole. By the end of October, 
Almost three weeks into the search, they had to admit defeat. Layton's nephew, Dr. Charles Goodell, along with other family members, had no choice but to leave the Adirondacks without him. The official search was called off, though Layton's son, Leslie, refused to give up. He returned to the area on his own, determined to find his father. He hired experienced woodsmen, including Ernest Hathaway and Hiram Porter, and they covered every inch of land from Lake Kushaka to Wolf Pond, but even with their relentless efforts, nothing was found. Out of sheer desperation, Leslie turned to a psychic. The psychic told him that his father was being held against his will by two men, one tall and one short. The psychic even drew a map of the area where the supposed captors were holding Layton. Encouraged by the detail, Leslie returned to the woods with renewed hope, following the map's directions, but it was another dead end. After days of searching, Leslie had no choice but to give up, heartbroken and frustrated by the complete lack of answers. By December, the Buffalo City Council officially declared Leighton G. Goodell dead and his pension was canceled. It was a symbolic closure, but for the family, the questions remain. How could an experienced outdoorsman like Leighton simply disappear without a trace? Was it an accident? Did he fall and succumb to the elements? Or was there something more sinister at play? Some locals speculated that Leighton may have been murdered and his body hidden deep in the woods. Others believed that perhaps Leighton, tired of life's struggles, had simply decided to walk away and start anew somewhere far away. But none of these theories could be proven, and to this day the mystery remains. In a strange twist, just two years later, in 1926, another man went missing in nearly the exact same location. Corporal Charles L. Bailey, a soldier stationed in Plattsburgh, was out deer hunting near Loon Lake Mountain when he too became separated from his group. Unlike Leighton, however, Corporal Bailey was found the next morning walking along a highway near McCollum's. Hungry and cold, but otherwise unharmed, he returned to safety. It was a strange coincidence, leaving people to wonder if something about Loon Lake Mountain itself might have played a role in these disappearances. Leighton G. Goodell's story remains one of the Adirondack's most haunting mysteries. A man well versed in the ways of the wilderness, gone without a trace, leaving nothing behind but rumors, theories, and unanswered questions. Did the wilderness take him, or did something else happen on that cold October day in 1924? We may never know, and perhaps only the mountain itself holds the answers.